Thank you for tuning in to Lynn Community Television's Counselor at Large Candidate Forum. The candidates running for Counselor at Large are Buzzy Barton, Jose Encarnacion, Brian Field, Joel Hippolyte, Brian Lapierre, Hong Nett, and Lennon Pena. Good evening, I'm Mukala Kabongo, LCTV's news director and moderator for tonight's forum. Tonight, we will hear from all the candidates running for Lynn City Councilor at Large on a variety of issues. The LCTV staff have developed the questions as a group, and they will include some of the topics we have seen on social media that the public has shown interest in. We will also ask one viewer submitted question. The timekeeper for tonight will be LCTV staff, staff member Richard Coppinger, and we ask that all candidates respect the timekeeping rules. The rules for tonight are as follows. No hair jokes. Um, <laughs> there will be no opening statements from candidates to allow for more questions to be asked to the candidates. The candidate to the moderator's left will answer the first question. The candidate to their left will answer the next question first and continues this way the rest of the forum. Candidates will be allowed 90 seconds to answer. This is not a debate, so no extra time will be allotted to, to respond to a previous answer. If a candidate would like to respond to another candidate's answer, they will not be granted additional time and must do so only within their allotted time. The timekeeper will hold a yellow card when 30 seconds remain and a red card when 10 seconds remain. If candidates go over the time, the moderator will interrupt and cut off from the candidate. Or we could use the little bell we got there. Candidates who do not respect the timekeeping rules will be disqualified from participating from the debate from the, for the remainder of the debate. At the conclusion of questioning, each candidate will be allotted a 90-second closing statement. The same timekeeping rules will apply for this. And with that, we begin with our first question. The city as a whole is very diverse. How do you plan to include all, cult all cultures in the decision-making process for your ward now and then in the future? And that question is for me, I imagine. Yes. Um, first of all, um, none of us here are ward councillors. We're councillors at large. We have the whole city, so we just don't uh, worry about one ward. We worry about the whole city. Um, you know, uh, my thing is I, I like to meet people in person. I do my best work when I'm talking to people face to face. So uh, a lot of uh, councillors like the social media. I do not. I like to see people face to face. I think I do a, a better job when I um, talk to people and go about it that way. Thank you. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, well, I believe that one thing that we should do to be inclusive, to include, um, to be very diverse, like the way the city is, is that we need to do um, community meetings. Once we get elected, that's one of the things we're going to do to hear the people, to um, to so they can feel they can they can feel that they are part part of the of the solution. And this they have so many good ideas, and I think we can include those ideas and um, and the things that we need to do for the city. So I, we need to make the citizens in, feel that they are inclusive, that they are important, that we are really representing them. Thank you. Certainly, Lynn is a diverse community. It always has and it always will be. That's probably one of the, the best parts about being a resident of Lynn um, and raising our families here. Uh, participation in every event, um, whether it's something that, that, that makes up your uh, heritage or someone else's heritage. As a funeral director, I've, I've included myself into different communities for years, understanding them so that I can better serve them. Um, as a funeral director, I shouldn't be asking a family how to serve them. And that's what I've taken as, a, as an approach as, a, as, a, as a, an elected counselor here in the city, as a counselor at large. I've participated well before being elected, so I understand uh, different 
different challenges that are being faced, that, that, that different community groups face, um, concerns, ideas. Um, everybody that participates, you know, it, everybody's welcome and they want to feel welcome and they, and, and to, to shun anybody, you know, because of how they look or because of, you know, any, any type of discrimination, certainly it affects the city as a whole. Uh, so, so to certainly educate yourself and to participate in every, in, in every group, um, certainly you'll be more prepared as a, as a counselor. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity, this, uh, opportunity to say thank you to the uh, Lane Community Television for hosting this event tonight. And uh, as uh, we know that uh, Lynn is a diversity series, and uh, we come across that uh, Lynn is uh, also a strategical series located with easy access to um, 128, 93. And uh, we are we are um, only nine miles from uh, north of Boston, and uh, I believe that we will need to uh, come in with a, a better strategy to communicate with all ethnic group and get them together to co to come in with a, with a good plan. for the city. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Brian Lapierre. I want to thank Lynn Community Television for hosting us here this evening. I approach diversity in two ways. I think there's community diversity, and then I think there's workforce diversity. I'll begin by talking about how we enhance and embrace and celebrate and how we honor different cultures throughout the city. We're constantly, my at-large colleagues and myself, attending various um, Juneteenth celebrations, Latino Khmer festivals. Um, we've just hired, as my Council and friend Brian Field said last week at a forum, uh, our first superintendent, African-American descent, as well as our fire chief, Chief Archer. We are doing everything we can, but there is more that we can do vis-a-vis -vis hiring, uh, reflecting what our neighborhoods look like in terms of in our classrooms. And uh, just now, as a matter of fact, the school committee is debating around a policy and a recruitment that the superintendent's being put forth on how we do get more diverse. How do we reflect what our workforce in our classrooms and throughout the city, including City Hall, DPW, library, I know they just made a hire, it's a person of color, and I think we're on the right track but we obviously can do more. We can step up our efforts in a lot of ways, and we have to get that from our community. We have to listen, be responsive, learn from that, and reflect the values that we share across Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. That's a, that's a great question. Um, diversity is the strength for our city, and uh, there's so many spoken language in our city, and we um, have seen so many people come to our city from different uh, part of the world. And they come here, not just, uh, just to come here, because they bring with them um, experience, uh, education, and expertise. So we learn a lot from them. By uh, uh, working in the city for the past eight years, I have met so many different groups. I'm so proud to be a part of it. I am a diversity myself. And, um, and uh, it's, it's like Brian said, it's wonderful. We see so many uh, events going on in our city, like uh, the Greek festival, uh, the Khmer New Year, um, the um, Latino uh, Association. All those, it's really, it's a, it's a jewel for our city, and uh, we, we want to see more. It's, it's not enough, so we want to see more, and uh, we uh, continue to work with all of them, make sure we all, um, do what we can to bring the city as a whole community, and uh, we all could benefit from this. And I'm very blessed to live in this city, and um, every day I'm thankful to see our school f with different of our students fr come from all, all over the world. And our city is also pretty diverse right now, and uh, we hire from different um, uh, ethnic background from uh, different countries, so we can continue to do more. Thank you. 
Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Lennon Pena, and I'm running for council at large. And uh, first of all, first and foremost, I'd like to thank God for allowing me and everyone here. I'd like to thank the Link Community Television for hosting this forum, and I'm honored. I'm 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 grateful to be here, and I'm very excited to be part of this forum. Diversity, yeah, diversity is our biggest strength for our city. That's what we say, but I don't think that's what the actions of our community has been showing that recently. You know, I like to see more part of diversity, right? I like to see the community have more, not only do we have to have community meetings to inform more of our, our residents, but we have to have <clears throat> meetings in different languages because we are very diverse. We have a big Hispanic community, we have a Muslim community, we have an Asian community. We need to um, have more information, be more diverse. But not only do we need to show that diversity in languages, but we also have to reflect that in our city hall with our hiring practice. We need to hire more people of color and women in city hall. That's something that we lack. You know, um, just want to touch and elaborate on the, you know, we hired the first black African, you know, first African American chief. I just want to point out, in, you know, that there was an independent panel that decided he was the most qualified person for the job. You know, I just, just want to put that out there. I, I know Mr. Archie, he's a good friend of mine, and um, he was the best qualified person, and uh, I think we could do a better job at that. You know, like there's, there's a lot of things that the city could do. For example, like parking bans. I think parking bans should be promoted, even announced in different languages, you know, because a lot of people get affected by it. Thank you. Thank you all for those responses. And we move on to question number two. Substance abuse and violence are constant issues in the city. How can you, as council at large, help curb these issues? So. Yes, I would like to, um, since I didn't do it in the first question, <laughs> say my name is Jose Encarnacion, running for City Council at Large. Well, one of the things that would, I think we should do it, uh, is education. Um, we need to start from early childhood education, educating um, our children, uh, because I think prevention is the most important thing for that to happen. And another thing is that we should, uh, when we get elected, um, I would call on, like I said before, community um, meetings uh, with families to address the issue and, and, and listen to them to see the best way to help those families because it's, um, it's very touching. Um, we have friends and families. Um, that we see going through a very difficult time in this process. And I think we need to humanize um, this issue and be more open to listen to, to their concerns and, and how can we help them. As chair of the opioid subcommittee for the Lynn City Council for the, la for the last two years, I've led um, an initiative where we had a forum hosted in the, in the council chamber where six moderators, experts in the field, uh, spoke and, and, and included all these statistics and, and what the city is doing, and not just within the city itself, but regionally. And each month I receive um, a statistics about overdoses here in the city. Uh, and from 2018 to 2019, every month except for one so far, has shown a decrease in overdoses, and, it, and a, de a decrease in overdoses, and a decrease in deaths from overdoses, and a lot of that is how is how we rely on uh, public safety, and how those resources that is, that are that are provided for our public safety are spent. Better training, better equipment. Our police, our fire, are better equ equipped to handle these types of emergencies. The agencies that are responding are effective. And that's what it's showing. That's what the t statistics are showing. It's showing at, with Sheriff Coppinger, uh, now that, at the Essex County uh, House of Corrections, that you're not a criminal because you have an addiction. And there's programs available for people to get help. There's a behavioral health uh, services uh, established at Lynn Police Department that are being more proactive with people that have addiction and, and, and getting them the help that they need so that it, it, it ends before it gets worse. 
Thank you. Once again, sir, my name is Joe Hippolyte, uh, running for uh, council at large in the city of Flynn. So uh, in addition of what uh, I was uh, saying there, that uh, I believe that we have to understand that uh, the drug addiction is not a crime. It is a disease. So we have to treat it like a disease. Therefore, we have to come in with uh, better programs to rehabilitate the people in drugs abuse. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's a huge issue around the city, both uh, two parts, the substance abuse part, and sometimes it's connected to uh, uh, violence as well. So we've got to continue to work very hard and work effectively and work smart um, with not only law enforcement but our community. Uh, as Brian Council Field has pointed out, many agencies that are there to help our community, our members. We also need, frankly, uh, more state intervention. We need state funding from Attorney General Healy's office to help cities like Lynn, gateway cities, that are suffering um, you know, overwhelmingly versus more uh, smaller or rural type of towns. So we really need to pursue grants any chance we can, uh, CLT offices, school resource offices, getting to the point of prevention and education at the grassroots level are important. I've proposed a citywide summit on the topic of violence and on substance abuse. Uh, we're gonna work with uh, Stop the Violence Lynn Coalition as well as Lysol and other groups, I recently did a survey. Over 90% of the respondents, when we talked about violence, want to do something about, we don't know what the, all of the answers are, but people are very willing to step up and offer their solutions, and we have to find solutions from within, from within our community, from within the residents of Lynn. They're mostly, uh, for the most part, may have an out-of-the-box thinking or an idea that we haven't thought of yet here, and uh, I think we have to tap their knowledge and resources and really put together a comprehensive approach to these two topics. Thank you. Yes, um, absolutely it need to be treated, these people, are, um, because they, they're not criminal. They just uh, can, can, cannot help themselves, they need help. And um, some of this part, we have to blame um, the medical uh, providers as well. They keep prescribing um, too strong uh, pain medication that will affect uh, them as well. And my wife is a therapist. She always um, remind her patients um, about the dangers of uh, pain medication. So she also remind me as well. So please don't take too much Tylenol. So, so that that will affect uh, us as well. But yeah, we do have um, uh, a lot of um, um, institution that help, like Lynn Community Health Center. They just receive a, a million dollars grant from the state and um, uh, to um, combat this uh, this kind of uh, uh, drug uh, epidemics. And um, so we like to continue work with um, uh, our state le delegation and to uh, get more grant from the state, perhaps from the federal, to uh, to um, help uh, this kind of uh, institution like uh, the Lynn Cooney Health Center and um, a bridge well. They're the places. For, for our residents to seek help. And, they sh and we also have to uh, educate ourselves, our families, and our friends, and how dangerous it is and where to get help. That's what we plan to do. As elected official, that's our job to make sure we find funding to, uh, and places to help um, our residents. Thank you. Substance abuse and violence. Substance abuse is a subject that's very close and dear to me. I've been working with addicts 12 and a half years, and uh, I, if I can bring back every person that, friend and family that, that, I've dealt, that I've dealt with, that I've seen get affected by this, I would fill this whole room up. You know, it's real, and people are dying. You know, and uh, it's something that the city has been dealing with for a long time. But now it's even worse. Like Hong Ness said, the game's still the same, it's just the faces have changed. You know, the drug dealers are no longer the small guy in the block. It's big companies, you know, these big pharmaceutical companies that are giving these prescriptions and a lot of people are getting addicted and affected. Not only do I want to bring 
Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm tired of, you know, statistics and, and, and we can identify and we know that there's an opioid problem. I want to bring solutions to this. I want to bring, because I know what works. And I'm telling you, because I am a product of a second chance. You know, I am in recovery and I've seen many women, men and women, turn their lives around, become productive members of society, become lawyers, you know, doctors, because they're all, at the end of the day, we are all human. And, we, and, and, and you can't help, you know, you can't help someone without compassion. We need to have compassion. And I know, what's, I know what works and what doesn't work. You know, and I want to bring solutions to the table. I don't want to bring statistics or identify. I want to bring real solutions to the table because I know what it takes. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, this is a great question for myself when you talk drugs and violence, because um, you're looking at a, a person that has 34 years of sobriety. I've been there. So uh, I think what we need to do, we need to get into the schools and educate the young kids. And then, and then we have to educate the parents, because um, you know some of these older kids that are doing the drugs we want to make sure that their parents aren't enabling them, and, and that's a big problem. So uh, we need to go out there, get some grants to get some of these parents involved so we can educate the parents as well as the students. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. And we move on to question number three. Question number three, what is your opinion on the status of the Lynn Senior Center? <laughs> Great question. Uh, like so many other communities that have senior centers, uh, Lynn is going to be working with closely with some of those other communities as we establish a new senior center for our seniors. So well deserving. It's a, it's a huge population in our city. Uh, certainly some uh, some challenges over the past couple of months uh, with uh, staffing structure that uh, certainly needs to be improved. Um, relationships, different groups that make up the seniors, um, having an open discussion, involvement, participation by them um, to see what they want, see what works in other communities, what, what, what can work in Lynn. Certainly the funding is, is key to that because everything that we do certainly costs money and we have to figure out how that's going to get paid for. Uh, the, the contract that we've had with Gliss for a long-term contract and, and how that's going to be reestablished to, 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 for the city to, to to establish its own um, senior center. Certainly those are challenges that we face over the next two years. Um, but I think having that involvement, having, having their um, ideas come forward, having a, an open discussion about what's effective, what's not, what, they, what has worked in the past, and, and what seniors want, whether it's uh, different groups during the day or, or activities or, or, or transportation, you know, those are all important issues to them and to have them involved is important in the discussion. Uh, thank you for that uh, question. That's a uh, really uh, a nice question when you come into um, elders in the city. And I believe uh, as a diversity city and lane that uh, we can do better with our uh, senior citizens in the city, that uh, by finding more funding and creating better programs for them. Because uh, there's a lot of uh, elders are complaining by locking in the house without no activities. And uh, I just hoping when I get in the office, and uh, I will uh, work in harder with my colleagues to find some more more money to put some more programs and better programs for them from the city. Thanks. 
Well, I won't beat around the bush on this in 90 seconds. You know, uh, I have seen or I've at least heard and witnessed what has gone on, and I'm upset about what's happening right now on Silsby Street. I support folks like Pam Edwards. I support Mass Senior Action. I support their efforts. I support Stacey Mancello, who's the former person who was uh, uh, dismissed. Um, and the practical matter of it is they're losing vital programming. Um, what's happening down there now, it's becoming a hangout. And we have to get back to where we were offering real good cutting edge stuff that our seniors can embrace. And that's when you attract you know, numbers, have it be social, have it be educational, have it be engaging. Don't have it be a place where harassment charges are filed and MCAD you know, uh, complaints are filed, which is the mass commission of against uh, discrimination. This is a shame. These are our most treasured population of the city of Lynn. They ought to be respected, they ought to be valued, and they ought to be in a facility that's worthy of them. I propose, once we get these parking lots all ready to go in 30 seconds, uh, the Ellis Street lot comes to mind. We need to build the Ellis Street lot up, and we need to have senior center, a new state-of-the-art senior center on the ground floor of that. And whatever else we want to do and how we build it up, we can then talk about. But seniors first in the city of Lynn, let's not forget about our seniors. Thank you. Yeah, a little bit of my uh, parents-in-law and uh, their seniors and how important they are. They bring so much to the table and they have so much experience. And we, we have to do what we can to help our seniors. We cannot forget about them. It's very really sad to see what happening at the Glace. And, uh, but also the other centers um, that uh, can be, uh, can be uh, work with as well. They have um, different uh, centers in, in, in the city and we can work with and uh, uh, Rainbow Adult Day Care Center also is a very, very good place to go. But uh, like Brian said, so we will continue to make sure Glace work the way it should be. It, it was great. It was so, so our senior was really uh, grateful for that. They had all kind of uh, services to provide to our senior. But right now, it's, it's very difficult for them. It, although we still have uh, certain programs for them, but it's so uncomfortable for them to be in the center because of what happened um, to um, to uh, uh, people who work there. I, I don't want to point any name, and we all know, and um, it's very it's pretty sad, and hopefully um, things will turn around better, and uh, as a city council, uh, as an elected official, we will help the Glace to bring it back to the way it, it, it was, and uh, we will do what we can. When um, it comes to the city um, take over, and we will, we will um, try to uh, work with the state, get more funding and, uh, and uh, hire uh, good people to work for, uh, for our senior. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, our seniors. That's, uh, my mom is still around and um, I treasure our seniors. I think they're our most valued uh, citizens. We get a lot of wisdom and uh, they, they hand down a lot, of, a lot of good things to us. And, uh, and I know the city's going to take over the senior center, and uh, that worries me because there's there's a um, we you know we're hurting for money right now, and we might not be able to provide a lot of the services that that they're gonna they're gonna have. And I like to see the, see the city for, um, you know look for for money outside, get you know state aid or whatever, so we can bring these programs back to, and, and and make sure ensure the seniors that that they have a good quali quality like like engaging them in activities um, having them involved in the community, um, whether it be with schools and whatever and and, and and the seniors can always help um, one thing I would do when I, when elected is i will i will um advocate for a lot of the nonprofits, you know, organizations to pick up some of the services, such as the Lynn YMCA, Leal, Lynn Housing, because there's, there's a lot of services that, you know, we can ask these uh, nonprofits to pick up some of these services for the seniors, because it's very important, it's, they're vital for us, and uh, we got to make sure, ensure their, their future, ensure that their safety, you know, ensure their safety, and uh, they're giving so much to the community, it's time that we give back to them, make sure that they are taken care of. This is a great question, because I believe it was aimed at me being the only senior citizen on the, senior, on the city council. <laughs> but um, as uh, Brian Lapierre mentioned, um, 
Silsby Street. Um, they were out, they weren't, weren't, weren't being treated right. And um, me and Diana Jacutis were out there walking their picket line. So, um, you know, you, you got to stick with the senior citizens. Um, they made this uh, city for us. You know, a lot of people paid a lot of hard dues for this city. And um, a lot of them are our seniors, and there's not enough senior housing. We need to get more senior housing. You know, uh, we're working on, right now, we're working on the old Eastern Junior High School, the old um, third grade, you guys call it the third grade macho. It was Eastern Junior High School when I went there. Okay, uh, we're trying to get uh, affordable housing there for uh, 55 and up. So we have to look out for our seniors. Our seniors did, did it all for us. Thank you. Yes, our senior. Um, as, uh, as Lenin said, totally agree. You know, we have to. I have my mother also. She's 86 years old. And um, usually she come here to the country and spend some time on those senior center. And I believe that those senior center, we need to bring back some of the programs that we have lost. Um, we, need, we need them to be educational. We need to ask them uh, what, what they want. Um, so um, there's so much activity that we can bring back. And uh, we can look up to the, uh, some of the uh, Latino senior center. Uh, you know, they have good programs. And I think uh, we can look up to, that, to them to, to see what else can we bring. We definitely, we need to, uh, to bring um, more fundings. And once I get elected, um, I will advocate um, to, to bring with um, we organization, nonprofit organization, to bring more fundings um, so we can help our, um, our seniors. And definitely, we need. Um, more uh, low-income um, unit uh, for our senior. We need more house, more housing, uh, more farm for housing uh, to help our senior. All right. Thank you all for those responses, and we move on to a viewer submitted question from Alan S in Ward Four. Voting numbers have been down in recent years. What do you propose to help increase voting numbers in the city? Would you support more voting locations? Do you want me to repeat the question? you want me to repeat the question? Yes, please. Okay. All right. This is a viewer submitted question from Alan S. in Ward 4. Voting numbers have been down in recent years. What do you propose to help increase voting numbers in the city? Would you support more voting locations? Uh, thank you. And uh, I believe that uh, it was the city of Lynn that uh, people are tired of long-term city official. That's why they were uh, staying home, that uh, going to vote because uh, I believe that uh, we need to engage more with the community in order to bring people out to vote again. Because uh, while I was uh, knocking doors with my team, talking with the resident of Lane, that uh, they were very angry and hungry for new leadership in the city. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. Yes, this is a civic issue, obviously. Uh, Councilor Nett and I actually were uh, spearheading an effort for, on behalf of the councilors uh, to bring voting back. We included KIPP Academy uh, four years ago, and we also uh, 
uh, doing right now through the work of uh, City Clerk Janet Rowe, uh, banners are up stating when uh, registration to vote, when you can register to vote, which is actually next Wednesday. Folks have until next Wednesday, the 16th, to be eligible to vote on November 5th. We are also encouraging folks, if you cannot make it to the polls on November 5th, can actually go down to City Hall in the clerk's office, in the election office, I should say, on the first floor, and do early voting. You can vote over the counter as an absentee if you're not going to be around on election day or you have something coming up or you're going to be incapacitated all day long. It's an easy way to vote. So providing access to voting is part of the issue and I think we're doing that. We need to get more folks out to vote and that's challenging. I know that she has put in many languages now uh, the fact that people should register to vote. I know my colleagues all try and promote that on social media as well as myself. The answer may not be additional polling places. The answer may be the amount and methods to vote, to increase voter participation across the city, particularly young folks in our high schools that are 18 and they're not registered to vote. So we're trying to make it easier and easier. It really is a little effort, but we ask everyone to come out to vote. I don't think anyone here is looking to, um, you know, put their thumb on voting or decrease the amount. We want much more than we had in the primary. Thank you. Yeah, we keep talking about um, um, ask people to go to vote. We all be a part of this. We all have to remind our, our friends, our family, our neighbors to go to vote. And uh, we do everything we can in our city right now to promote uh, people, um, register people to vote and go to vote. And we have an um, absentee ballot. We have uh, early voting. And we, like Brian said, a banner. And we even uh, uh, move um, the voting station to Kipps Economy because we knew that um, um, our resident that areas uh, cannot go to a vote at North Shore Community College or some other places they used to have. So that's why we decided to, uh, to move uh, uh, the voting station there. And hopefully uh, we will continue to encourage them to go to vote. And it's, um, I don't think anything is more important than, uh, than voting, that's to express your, your voice. Because many, many other countries, they're dying to go to vote because they want change. And we have the opportunity, this is your right. And uh, we have to explain to them, continue to explain. Because my wife and I have been going around um, the community all over the city and uh, reaches the people to vote, sit in the kitchen uh, table, and we not just remind them, we do it for them, we um, show them how to, uh, to register. And we register over a thousand people, and those thousand people go to vote. We keep calling them, make sure they go to vote, it's your right. If they go outside the country, make sure vote before that. And that's what, they, that's what we continue to do that. And, uh, and um, so I see that um, a lot of people try to do that as well, and uh, we will have to continue to do that. To help each other out. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate your efforts on uh, promoting, you know, people to vote and uh, urging people out there. And uh, but I think the city needs to do a better job of promoting more of our elections, like our primaries and when when to register. Because we do, uh, seems the city does a better job of promoting the concerts. Uh, I think Bobby Brown got a little more exposure than our primaries. And uh, I don't mean to, you know, sound funny, but that's the truth, you know. And uh, I think the city could do a way better job in that. As far as polls, I think we do need to have some more polls, more more voting polls in, in different wards. Because I think Ward 1 has three, three, three voting polls, right? And uh, the other wards have one. And I don't think it makes it fair because it makes it, it's a lot harder for other people to get in certain areas. And um, I think maybe we should try to equal the, the field a little bit. You know, we can maybe get a bigger turnout. Another reason I think that we don't get such a big turnout in our city is because they don't see too many people that reflect them running for office. I think this time we might see a little different change because there's more people, more, you know, we see a little more, 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 more different people running, you know, for office. And um, hopefully, you know, we have a bigger turnout. But I think the city could do a much better job on promoting our elections to registrations and not only, not only, but in different languages. You know, we, we got to reach out, reach out to people. There's plenty, there's plenty of technology, social media, you know, there, there's many ways, but we could do a much better job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I don't think we need to, uh, any more voting locations. I believe uh, there was 6% uh, that were, uh, came out in the last election, 
And um, I think that was because the city as a whole did a poor job of uh, letting people know it was election day. You know, uh, we just have to do a better job. And I think we're trying, it, uh, going in the right direction from the clerk's office. Um, they're advertising it more. They're putting it in different languages. So I think uh, we're heading in the right direction, but there's always more that we could do. Your vote is your voice. And I think that we should do it is that we should uh, educate more the citizens. Education is the key. Um, whenever I find, um, while you're knocking on doors, I find um, citizens saying, oh, I'm no, I'm, I'm, I don't vote. Then I try to explain then how important is that they vote. Because every, everything that happens in the city, every decision that the council uh, and the mayor make is affect all of us. Whether you are citizen or not, whether you, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's affect all of us. So I think we need to educate our, um, our citizens. And, uh, and we need to reach them. And what I'm doing myself, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not waiting to, uh, to be elected, but I'm doing it right now. I visit the people, I visit the, 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 the citizens with, um, with the form. I went to the city hall, got some form. I visited them. Uh, today, I went to the city hall and I, and I brought um, five, um, five form, to register form. So we need to reach the people and then we, we, can, we have to educate them to, to tell them how important the vote is. I think when we look at the 6% from the last election, the primary, a lot of it faults because it was the day after a holiday. Uh, I know people that had come up to me and said, geez, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't even know it was election day. It was so busy in, in my own life, and everybody's busy in their own lives. And there's nothing more disheartening to look at the outvote <laughs> and see who didn't take time to vote. I think a lot of it starts at home with the discussion of what values and what effort each candidate puts in. I think it's the responsibility of all seven candidates here tonight, the ward councilors, the members of the school committee that are gonna be running for re-election or for, or for an opportunity to, to serve on the school committee or on the council uh, in this upcoming election to promote themselves, to encourage people, and that's gonna encourage people to come out to vote. The, 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 city, cl the city clerk's office and the election department have done everything they can. They, they, they work with, within their budget. It's a fine, tight budget in all departments throughout the city. They're promoting it in multi-language. They're promoting it in, in advertising, as, as Brian and Hung mentioned, in banners. There's early voting. You can go to City Hall right now. There should be no reason, if you're away on November 5th of this year, that you shouldn't have time between now and then to vote. It takes five minutes to vote. And the effort that we put in as a counselor is minuscule to the amount of time that it takes for you to go vote and share your voice. What you want in this city is reflected in your vote. It, it, it's at the city level, it's at the state level, it's at the national level. And policy is created by those that are elected. You need to go out and vote. You need to support the candidates that you believe represent you and are gonna be responsive to you. Well, for those, we halfway there. Uh, we're on to question number five. Several areas in Lynn flood during heavy rains and the beaches have closed due to high bacteria levels. As council at large, what would you do to help alleviate these issues? Thank you, good question and timely question because it's going to rain. We're in the middle of a Northeaster <laughs> right now. Um, we've had episodes of this and they have been more frequent. Um, I'm almost tired of the folks who are saying it only happens every 100 years when it happens every season, it seems, mm -hmm. uh, multiple times over. Uh, my colleagues and I, I think we're doing a responsible job and when the, you uh, gotta clean the catch basins, water and sewer can only do so much. We do have an old infrastructure. I think councilors like Councilor Chakutis in Ward 5, which predominantly floods, and Councilor Hogan in Ward 6, which predominantly floods, those are the two big floodplains in the city of Lynn. They're doing yeman's work. Mm -hmm. They are only, so, there's only so much a council can do on this very issue. It does need what we are trying to do as a, I should say the agency of the Lynn Water and Sewer is make sure that our infrastructure is up to date. Make the investments needed in Westland.
years ago with the combined sewer overflow and try and alleviate a lot of the burdens that are happening around that Bennett Street area and River and Camden Street and for Diana on Monroe Street in the downtown. So we are really uh, focused and uh, helpers as at-large candidates, and we support the ward councilors, and we try and alleviate and help with their calls if they're getting, no, no pun intended, flooded with calls about flooding. But I know Freddie himself, I know Diana himself, herself, have been hands-on in folks' basements, trying to alleviate, trying to pump out. I know Council Walsh and others have done that. So we'll continue to be hands-on, take that approach. Thank you. Yes, um, especially West Lynn, every time it rains, heavy rain, so it's, <laughs> our street look like a river and a lake. It's really, it's very embarrassing, but it's not our fault because it's so expensive to, to fix that, uh, that problem, hundreds of uh, millions of dollars. And we do what we can to help our ward councilor like uh, um, our mobile um, volunteers to clean up um, the catch basin. That's what we have been doing that um, almost every weekend, and I uh, applaud the effort. And uh, the state will have to uh, to help us, and we are we are hungry for for money to to fix this problem because it's too much for our residents to to uh, to to take because the basement being flooded all the time, the cars are being um, uh, are being flooded, and uh, they cannot afford to to do this. And plus, they they have to buy the flood insurance. It's, it's a lot, and so we have to do what we can as elected officials, work with the mayor, with the, our state delegation to get some funding. That's what we really need right now because hundreds of millions of dollars need to be, need to be spent on this project, and we cannot wait. We have to do what we can, and it's an urgent. Thank you so much. <laughs> good, good question about flooding. Uh, <laughs> Brian, I'm that guy that's out there cleaning the basins. I wear, I'm an employee of the Lynn Water Sewer Commission, and my duty is uh, to keep uh, cleaning basins. And, uh, yes, flooding is an issue, especially in Ward 5, Ward 6, and we need to work collaboratively, you know, together with, you know, the, with resources from our city, and, and, and I know the Lynn Water Sewer Commission is doing the very best it can. Um, our new sewer, our sewer superintendent, Neil Johnson, is doing a phenomenal job. Um, he's out there. He, he, he got us uh, cleaning basins. He's, he's getting to a lot of problems. Where, you know, it's, it's going to take a, an, a, an entire effort from the city, and like, like, you know, some of the incumbents just mentioned, you know, a lot of the ward councilors are working hard, and I appreciate it, but we all need to work together as a community. I'm out there cleaning those basins and there's a lot of trash. There's a lot of, uh, one big issue that we have is a lot of plastics, a lot of plastic bottles. You know, that's something that maybe we can advocate on, maybe adding a deposit on a maybe, that'll alleviate things, but there's a lot of pollution that's, go, you know, we have a lot of trash that's going in into our basins, so maybe we need to work together and educating people on recycling more and, and avoiding trash, getting more volunteers to clean our basins because there's a lot of trash that's being washed into the ocean, right into our river where it goes. A lot of stuff, and, and, and our system's old. You know, we have a combined sewer, you know, sewer and drain system that there, that's, that's um, right across, and it's kind of old, and it takes a lot of money to live here. And I know the Lynn Water Sewer Commission's doing everything they can, the city, and it's, it's gonna take a whole collaborative effort from our entire city. It's, it's something that just can't be, be uh, uh, washed away. <laughs> Thank I know uh, there's a lot of people out there working on the water problems. Um, I spent plenty of nights in Ward 6, Ward 5, and Ward 7, um, you know, helping the councilors out, um, you know, uh, calling the uh, water and sewer to get down there. <laughs> You know, and I've seen Lenny out there quite a few times. But um, I'd, I'd just like to mention that um, the uh, water and sewer is doing everything they can. Um, they spent, uh, they're spending a lot of money down there, especially in uh, what, uh, what's what, the six, what six. They're putting that new uh, water plant down there on Commercial Street, water pump station, which um, should uh, really help a lot, you know, but. There's still a lot to do, and uh, a lot of citizens, like uh, Lenny said, they have to be responsible. You can't be throwing stuff down the sewer and stuff. You know, it, do it doesn't help, and you should make sure your um, sewers are clean. Thanks. That's a very, very important question. 
I'm, I myself, I live in War, in War 5. And in the last, it was the last year, oh my God. Um, I couldn't leave the house. And then um, I had to, had to go to work. And when I, when I left, I went to, um, I went through Linway, so I had to drive back and go to 107. And then my car got stuck, and I couldn't drive it anymore. It, it, it turned off. So I think it's a, it's a problem. It's a huge problem that we need to be addressed. Um, and I think once we get elected, we need to work together with my other colleagues to, uh, to find funds. Uh, we need funds to solve these, these issues, and I definitely agree with Lenin. I said, you know, our residents, they also can help. Everyone can help, not, not throwing um, uh, trash on the street. So um, we need, the, the main thing is that we need to get funds, because uh, I know that uh, lean water and sewer, um, they are doing a, a, a tremendous job, but we need to um, find funds so we can solve this issue. Thank you. Uh, Council President Sear has had oh, many um, neighborhood and community meetings um, that all four of the at-large councilors have supported with friends of Lynn and Hunt Beach, our neighbors to the north and Swampscott, and what their effect is on, on the bacteria counts that it has closed the beach at several locations after storms this past summer. Uh, and, and to support what my colleague uh, Brian said, about what we're doing to support our ward councilors. I know three days into my first term, I was on my hands and knees helping uh, Councilor Walsh pump out a basement in Ward 7 and with, with that storm. These storms, we, we talked about climate change for so many years that it's really now starting to affect us. And we're starting to see those effects of what policy at the federal level, at the state level, uh, those decisions that elected officials are making to, to cut emissions or, or not cut emissions, you know, going back and forth on these different laws, we're seeing that effect because we are a, a, a coastal community. Um, it's going to continue to get worse. The, the Water and Sewer Commission is is doing what, what Brian said, is separating that stormwater um, and sores in the Westland project like they did in Eastland. And it's a, it's a multi-year project. It's a, I think they're on phase two at the pumping station that we just supported uh, the building over at Breedfield. Uh, those are going to take, it's going to take time. And it's a multi-year process to alleviate some, not all, but some of the flooding in West Lynn in different areas throughout the city. But climate change, really, we're seeing those effects right now in these 100-year storms happening every three months. Well, as we come in on the rain season as now, and I believe one of the solutions that... Uh, we need to review our drainage system and uh, look for opportunities and improvement to separate the rainwater from the sewer system. And uh, we also we also need to keep our our drainage system clean in order uh, to prevent flooding in the city. Thanks. Thank you. I think you're next. Uh, you still, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you did. You did. Yeah. You're all right. You are right. <laughs> all right, we are, <laughs> we are on to question number six. The city is starting to recover from, from financial troubles that have been plaguing us for years. If elected, how will you prevent budget shortfalls in the future? Yes, we, as you know, we, um, we operate the city with uh, less than $400 million. That's, that's not much with uh, uh, the city of uh, about 100,000 people. And our schools really takes uh, almost 50%. Uh, for our budget and, uh, and um, public safety also take a, a chunk of that. But um, yeah, we always need need more fund. Yeah, as you know, we uh, we took a loan uh, for 40 million dollars to to pay off the debt that we we uh, we were in, in a hole. And currently, um, with this council and the mayor, and we we do a pretty good job and we balance our budget so far. 
and uh, we do have some money left. But to prevent that from happening um, to the whole thing, we have to um, uh, very carefully uh, appropriate the money uh, responsibly. So certain um, program that we say we uh, we don't need to uh, to uh, fund, we have to um, we have to uh, find ways to uh, to help that as well. But again, come to the point that we have to uh, promote our city to make sure we try to attract investors as many as we can. Right now we see that people are starting to come to invest in our city. That's a great thing. And our small businesses are very uh, helpful to, uh, to uh, uh, our economy as well. And we also need funding from the state, from the federal, anything, any way we can. But the spending, we have to be very, uh, very careful what we spend on and we have to look at very carefully before us we appropriate uh, any funding to a certain uh, department. Thank you. You repeat the question for me, sir, please. The city is starting to recover from financial troubles. Have it, this, let me see. The city is starting to recover from financial troubles that have been plaguing us for years. If elected, how will you prevent budget shortfalls in the future? Oh, that's a very, very touchy, our city finances. Well, if elected, I would want to, I would want to start with having an outside, outside source to a, a total audit so we can know where we're at. Find out what, you know, what departments lack funding, you know, just try to pinpoint where our issues are. Then we need to facilitate and um, advocate for more outside money. You know, we need state funding, federal funding. If elected, I would push for us to uh, be part, everyone engage in our census, you know, because the census is very important. It's going to affect us for the next 10 years, and we need federal funding from our census. I would try to do everything I can in my in, in my power to 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 make a big effort to try to count people and ensure, especially those that are not citizens, to reassure them that you know what, you're not in harm's way if you participate in the census because it's very important. It's vital for our finances to, you know, for our, our city finance, you know, finances to 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 get federal. Funding. Funding, you know, um, one thing that I like to do is I like to advocate to have more investors that want to bring commercial revenue to our city. You know, let's work with, with, with our, you know, with commercial revenue. Like it seems like we're not working with with these, you know, big big industrial industrial companies. Like we we Garelic Farms left. You know, GE's a lot, a lot, half of GE's gone. You know, we need to work with them instead of giving these builders tax breaks. Look, like, come on, everybody's going to come here. Let's stop giving these builders tax breaks. You know, and because uh, at the end. Like the benefits are, are, are outweighing, you know, the, the the trouble. You know, a lot of people being pushed away. You know, let's work with small businesses. You know, that'll help our finances. You know, work with small businesses to create more jobs and more funding for our city, get more commercial revenue. I think um, I don't think we need to do any more. Um, you know. The budget shortfall. Um, I lost my thought. <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> Something about the budget. Yeah, the, the city is starting to recover from financial troubles. troubles that have been plaguing us for years. If, if elected, how will you prevent budget shortfalls in the future? Okay. The um, first thing I do, I do, which I've been saying since I got on the council. And I've been on this. Is, I'm coming up on my eighth year, uh, four terms. Um, we need a city planner. Um, we need a grant writer. We need to bring these people in that are going to help us bring revenue in. And once we bring revenue in, it will take away a lot of our problems. But we need to bring revenue in. And that's the only thing that's going to get the city out of these problems. Thank you. Budget shortfalls. Uh, beside, beside bringing a, a city planning, which I agreed, uh, we need to, it is, it is uh, basic uh, economics. We need to spend less than what we get. We cannot spend more than the money that, that the city get. And so we don't get in this um, city um, deficit. And I believe we think um, we, we should bring uh, more investment. Like, for example, I remember years ago 
we have um, we have a hotel here in the downtown Lynn. We, in Lynn, we do not have a hotel. I think um, we need to um, to make a possible. We need to work together to bring some investment uh, hotels. We are 15 minutes from um, from the airport, and I work for an airline, and sometimes. Uh, customer, when we have um, storms, customer, they need hotel, but there's no hotel around. And Ling is not that far, so we need to bring uh, we need to bring that investment here to the city, and we need to um, to do something to try to bring uh, tourism to the city of Ling. Ling is a very historic uh, city, and I think we can, as Salem does, and Cambridge is another city. I think we can bring tourism, and, and that will help our financial. I think the key word to their question was it's starting to recover. It doesn't say that we've completely recovered because we haven't. We're starting to recover, and I think that's reflective in the councillors that, that have, had, have been serving over the past two years through the difficult decisions that we've had to make. Borrowing $14 million to, to balance the budget this year without having to borrow, we balanced the budget. And it's the responsibility of all 11 councillors working together through the mayor's office and the unions throughout the city recognizing uh, the challenges that the city faces. Uh, collective bargaining is done in a fair and respectful way to recognize hardworking people in the city and they're supporting their family and through the mayor's office and through the council, we've done that. Those challenges are still gonna continue. We still have um, an appointment from the state from, as a fiscal stability officer, much different than an overseer because they recognize that relationship between government and the unions. Uh, to, to negotiate in fair contracts. That's important to, to recognize of what we've done already to continue that process. Over the next two years, it's gonna continue that way and we need to make sure that we're not just starting, but we're sustaining that recovery. The, the budget, it, it, it's a key to this election and, and what we've done so far is shown what we've done, what we can do when we work together and the relationships that we form with one another and the trust that we have for one another, and, and then it, it carries over. So those are important decisions that the voters have to make this, this election year. Well, I believe that the city of Lynn is uh, strategically situated with quick access that uh, we have to build our reputation and uh, develop a new culture that uh, can be attracting businesses to come to our city and to create more jobs and better opportunity in the city. Well, one of the part of the question, McCullough, is to make sure that it doesn't happen again and ensure how, what safeguards have been put into place so that we, we don't return to a deficit spending situation. And we've worked collaboratively, as my colleagues have said, with the mayor's office. We've hired a full-time CFO. We have uh, re reaped some savings on health insurance uh, through negotiations. We've incorporated a small meals tax to increase revenue throughout the city, throughout our city budget. We have. Um, just now have finished seven, I believe, out of eight uh, recreational marijuana dispensaries that will be opening up that all have host agreements in place to put in increased revenue, new revenue to the city of Lynn, revenue that we haven't seen in the past. We always want to expand the commercial tax base. We, uh, as, as Councilor Field said, we have a fiscal stability officer who is really attached to the city of Lynn making recommendations to us as chair of the budget committee working closely with the mayor. We have these safeguards in place now. These were not here before. Developing the waterfront is important, it's critical and improving our bond rating as well. That's the next step. And trying to build new schools ultimately is another goal that's gonna increase values around the city. And doing a comprehensive plan to get that stuff done. A lot of the budget costs and needs are fixed costs. They are out of our control vis-a-vis -vis salaries and health insurance and pension liability. But for the monies that we do have, I think we do a really good job and I think the departments around City Hall have lean budgets. We have to make sure we keep that accountable and keep moving in the right direction. Thank you.
And we are on to question number seven. <clears throat> Great. Right. Question number seven. What is your opinion on providing tax breaks to developers? Ooh. Well, I already expressed my opinion on that. I don't believe we should give tax breaks <clears throat> to developers who are not going to bring affordable housing or inclusionary zone to, to some of our people because um, a lot of Lynn's people, this new market rate, you know, and the, the increasing of taxes, you know, the, the, the escalating property taxes and, and the new market rate development is just increasing rents. You know, there's, uh, the, the people are being pushed away from Lynn. You know, uh, people that are given 40, 50 years of their life, you know, they're being pushed away. They can't afford it. Every day I get messages from friends and family like, oh, I can't afford this. You know, a, a, a single person needs to just to afford a two-bedroom apartment has to make 34, 35 bucks an hour. I don't know where they're working. Uh, you know, I'm not making that kind of money. You just can't afford this, you know, and um, I don't think developers who are not going to bring anything to the community should get a, should get a tax break. Um, and, you know, we need to adopt things like the CPA, Community Preservation Act, or, you know, give them, you know, make them have a fair share. You know what I mean? Not all of them got a tax break, but, you know, I, I don't think we should be giving tax breaks to, to builders who are, especially if they're not going to bring anything to the community. You know, if the benefits outweigh the problem, you know, the, 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 the pain, you know, it, I don't think it's worth it. Is it worth to really push people away from land? People that are giving so much to this community, especially a lot of seniors. You know how many seniors can't afford the cost of living? You know, especially with this new development, the new market rate that's happening. And, and we, we talk about traffic and safety, bringing more people into our downtown area. Is it in downtown? Do you think it's really going to alleviate problems? You know, I mean, we, we got to start thinking at one point about people, you know? Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm for tax break if it's going to give uh, Lynn people affordable housing if, they, if they'll if uh, they put it in writing that Lynn people take priority for it, you know. Um, I think um, I don't see any way any council could disagree with uh, that as long as Lynn people are being taken care of through a tax break. Thank you. I'm in favor of tax break if the people of Lynn going to benefit from it, especially long-income family. Um, also, to this big developer, if we give them tax break, we need to make sure that s most of the, of the employees working on those, on those big buildings, for example, need to be from Lynn. So that money stay, stay in, the, in the city of Lynn. And also, and I, what I think is very important, which is part of my platform, is that we need to make sure that we get um, inclusionary zoning on those um, b huge buildings that are building. Um, I agree. Once I get elected, um, I will, with the support of my um, other elected official, I will submit a proposition uh, for 20 to 25 percent of those units uh, to be separate for low-income families. Hey, the question about tax breaks for developers, I think we have to take each project um, at what it's worth. We'll look at the Monroe Street project, and I know that's the one that we, everybody's talking about, the tax break, because that's probably the most recent of the projects. And what the developers proposed and what the city's negotiated back in return. And what was negotiated by the, the developer and the city are two different projects in the beginning stages. If the city's going to ask the developer, you know, or the developer comes with an open mind saying, what is your vision? And they meet with our economic development team, and they meet with the mayor's office, they meet with the councilors, the ward councilors, and, 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 and our, as a collaborative. And the city recommends that this is our vision, that we want you to go 10 stories and we want the first floor to be commercial. It may be out of that particular development's budget. And for them to, 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 to get people to invest into their project, they need to see some types of investment from the city in a tax break. If the particular property in Monroe Street was receiving $3,000 in tax-based revenue as an empty lot, 
it could have been so many other opportunities uh, for construction in that particular site. It's a by right property. The, if the developer w had the, the funds to, to build a five or six story building and do what they want, they could have just in the negotiation of the, of, the, of the purchase of the lot without the city's approval. To go 10 stories in first floor commercial, that does take a little a give and take, and those are the tough to, the negotiations that the city has to have with these individual developers before they're given these tax breaks. Thank you. So um, as we all understand that uh, the government and the local official Government need uh, some more money to provide him more and better service in the city. But uh, I don't think I will be uh, in favor of uh, the de developers coming in, in the city and uh, pushing the low income minority out of the city. Because uh, I have uh, a lot of complaints from uh, many, different, many different residents in the city that complaining about the life of living, the housing in the city that's uh, coming up every year. They cannot afford to live in the city anymore. They, uh, they have to run out of the city. And uh, they don't know where they're going to end up. And I believe it's not uh, a good idea that, uh, to give uh, a tax break for uh, the developers in the city. Well, the question is very simple for me. I, I don't uh, represent developers and I don't work for developers. I work for the residents of the city of Lynn. So I was in opposition. I was on the record prior to that on the Monroe Street project. So I did not vote for the uh, tax incremental financing. I didn't vote for the benefit that the developers got. I do understand the give and take of negotiations. Um, but at the same time, I would much prefer that we try to find common ground around community benefit agreements, things that aren't going to be tax incentives, but something that folks will be doing, building and giving something back to our communities. Um, we cannot be afford uh, in our budget strife that we've gone through the last couple of years, I don't think we're going to have many proposals coming to us in terms of uh, TIFs and um, incentives because we just don't have the reserve allocation in our current budget to give away tax breaks at this time. So until the cash flow and until our reserves are built up sufficiently enough, I don't think we should be giving developers uh, tax breaks at this time. And uh, it's a position I feel strongly about and um, I'm proud of the vote that I took. Thank you. Just like Brian um, said, uh, I also did not vote in favor of a tax break for a developer in, uh, on the Monroe Street either. But um, I'm willing to, um, to uh, negotiate with uh, developers as long as they um, provide jobs, give jobs um, to our um, Lynn resident and uh, affordable housing. As long as we benefit from, from developers, we're willing to sit down and negotiate with them and see how, uh, how, how it goes. Uh, I think the negotiation is always, always a good thing. It, uh, we have to learn from each other. What can you give me and what I can give you? So we come to the middle, uh, middle ground. In the meantime, I don't see uh, any proposal. I cannot uh, support any tax break for any developer. But if I see the proposal, when I see um, that it will benefit us, and benefit our union jobs and benefit our residents, that I will consider about that. So right now, so we're gonna put that aside and we will take a look, a closer look in the, in the future if any developer approaches. Thank you. Great. And we'll move on to question number eight. Over the past several years, we have seen major developments get started or completed for housing businesses like Market Basket and more. What do you hope to do to attract more developers to the city? I think I've already answered that question. Um, we need uh, grant writers in the city. Um, Kevin Ganey. Um, when Kevin, 
Kevin Ganey was in the city. He was the uh, city planner. Um, that was j part of his job to uh, bring in, you know, more resources into the city, uh, bring the businesses in. And until we get a grant writer, we're going to be behind the eight ball, you know. So um, uh, EDIC, they do what they can do, but um, we need a full-time person doing that kind of work. Thank you. Well, I do believe that we need to um, create policy to uh, to attract a developer, um, like uh, he mentioned, uh, Market Basket and other big company. Uh, we also had to be very careful because we had to think of every single small businesses in the city. Um, most businesses are small businesses, and when we have a big um, big uh, businesses, it affect uh, the small businesses. So we had to um, negotiate and what can we get from um, and what the city and what the resident will get. But if we will affect uh, most residents and most bus and small businesses in the city of Lynn, um, uh, we have to um, negotiate and see what's, what, what they have to, to offer to the city. So I think we, uh, at the same point that we create policy to attract them, we have to make sure that it doesn't affect uh, our um, small businesses uh, around the city. And the question with how do you attract more developers to the city? I think the city's done a great job over the past two years, um, having a more inclusive and welcoming um, participation in the, as far as the development on the waterfront goes, particularly. Um, open space, we've had several community meetings um, at different venues throughout the entire city to get the city's feedback. Um, this November, the city's going to be having a summit. We've hired uh, an outside uh, organization to assist the city. Uh, I'm a council appointee to that committee uh, to focus on transportation, arts and culture, economic development, and housing all throughout the city. So it's up to the residents to respond of what type of development they want to see, whether it's open space, parks um, along the waterfront, easy accessibility, affordable housing, different things of where the city's goals need to be met. Uh, not just, you know, ju not just our voices, but everybody's voices throughout the entire city. That's what makes Lynn great. And, and what makes government work is when we're listening to what the public wants. Uh, that's an approach that we're going to take. Um, MAPC is an organization that's been contracted by the city. We'll be working closely with them to, to get the exact numbers of where we need to be as far as for affordable housing, um, for seniors, for, for our residents. We work closely uh, with Lynn Housing and, and Neighborhood Development, the mayor's office, Every organization, but we've been we've taken a more inclusive and, and proactive role, and, and included everybody in the community in these decisions. Um, his question is uh, how to attract more businesses in the city, and uh, I will repeat that uh, we have to work to build our reputation and develop a, a unique culture to attract cooperation and more businesses to come in the city to provide more jobs and better opportunity for the citizens of Lynn. Thanks. Thank you. So two-part question. One I see is housing, which is residential, and that we rely on our housing authority arm of the neighborhood and development that's doing a very comprehensive in-house, infill housing program. So folks can be first-time home buyers, single-family homes, replacing uh, multi-dwellings and apartments, eliminating density across the city. So I applaud the efforts of Mr. Gator and his team. And then when you look at Mr. Cowdell and the EDIC, the economic development team, so Support small businesses. I was at one this morning. Um, Uncommon Feasts. It's in the Lydia Pinkham building. Give it a plug tonight, 271 Western Ave. You cannot believe the small businesses in the Lydia Pinkham building. I was astonished by, you can go and do yoga. You can go and see, um, go and buy artwork. You can go have a bite to eat. These things are happening throughout our city. It's a different economy. It's not just the gig economy, but it's the pop-up economy is what 
some people have referred to it as. Harvard Box on Linden Street, where we have Makerspace. Uh, this is all happening, it's called the Brickyard co Collaboration. This is all happening within, within the city of Lynn. It's new development, it's thinking out of the box, we must recruit, we must be hands-on, we must approve projects not only on the waterfront, but adjacent to the waterfront. My council colleagues and I wanted on Blossom Street a state-of-the-art self-storage facility that was gonna bring seven, eight hundred thousand dollars a year in property taxes. That could not get through the Zoning Board of Appeals for whatever reason. We need to support business and be pro-business, but at the same time, make sure that we get what we need for our residents. So I support bringing and recruiting and attracting business, and I obviously support the infill housing as well. Thank you. Um, to attract developer to Lynn, for years I have been uh, um, asking to uh, create a, a business liaison who walk the street, visit businesses, so um, they, uh, they understand what the policy we have and what uh, uh, availability that um, our city can, uh, can help them. We also have to work with um, um, business associations like um, uh, Lynn, Erie Chambers of Commerce, uh, North Shore Labor uh, Business Association, and others, because they are part of this. They, they, they uh, play a big part of uh, promoting our city. And public safety is very important. If you don't feel safe in the city and, and developers feel afraid to come to invest in our city. So we have to put more money. By doing that, we have to re uh, ask more money from the state to, uh, to fund our police and fire departments and uh, DPW. And also, I would like to see um, fresh flowers hanging on the poles so that we to show that our city is lively and uh, we, we, we meet for business. And uh, like um, every year and every April, so we, we have a huge uh, um, event at the Commons, a track five, between 5,000 to 10,000 people. That, that's, that's, a, that's a good thing that promote our city. So promote our city is, is the best way and get everyone to, uh, on board. And, and we all have to help each other to clean our city, to make sure our city is safe, and show that our city is liable. And uh, also I want to see a uh, uh, restaurant month on a summer that will attract more people to come. Thank you. How do we attract more businesses to our city? Well, I agree like what Mr. Hong Nett said, we need to work on public safety. We need to ensure the safety of people, make sure that they feel safe when they're in our city. We also need a public information officer, someone who can promote our city, promote the good resources, our rich history. Uh, you know, the, 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 someone, you know, we also need to promote the diversity of our city. You know, uh, you know I, I, we have a rich history of, of of different, you know, immigrants that came to our city and migrated. We have to show our culture, you know. Uh, also, work. We got to work with small businesses. You know, give them incentives where, you know, we don't have to give a total tax break if you're not giving into the, anything to the community. But let's give them some incentives with some. There's some breaks where if you hire people from Lynn, uh, let's let's expand on. Let's work on public transportation. Like I like to see advocate to we we can expand the blue line or get more increase our, our public transportation. That That'll bring more businesses to our, you know, we're, we can help attract more businesses to um, our city. We know we need to work on our commercial policy, our, you know, our commercial revenue policy, so we can keep companies here, you know, and uh, that's, that's all. Thank you. We are going to go to our final question. This is a bonus question. We, you know, we've, I think we, we, I've heard you guys already state your opinion on this before, but doesn't hurt to hear it again. All right. What is your opinion on creating a city planner position in the city of Lynn? Well, my opinion is that it would be very, very important. As I said before, I agree. I agree with a city planner. A city planner will help us uh, to see um, what the good things that we can do to um, to make a better lane, to make a city a better, to, to attract businesses and to attract in, investors that to give to the community. So I think I agree. I agree with a uh, with a city planner. I thank you for the question. Uh, that's what the council's been doing with the mayor's office, trying to figure out a way to fund that. 
position. Um, that's what we've been doing over the past three years because we, we see how important of a role a city planner fa uh, plays in this, the, uh, the economic development, the housing development in the city, uh, different parts of downtown and redevelopment um, to bring it back to the vibrant area that it once was. Uh, the, develop, the development of the waterfront is gonna be key over the next two years and the next five and 10 years. Um, getting each property owner to sit down and, and, and discuss what they have for a vision for their own site, how it plays into the, uh, into the plan that was just presented last uh, two meetings ago at our council. Uh, for, as far as open space, as far as development for housing, as far as development for commercial space. Uh, that's a key part of what a city planner will, will, will do. Um, so far the city's contracted MAPC and they're gonna continue this discussion and see where we need to focus our attention and, and, and be inclusive to the community and see what folks want. It's our city, it's not just one or two people, it's everybody and, and everybody should have their input. We're trying to make that as easily, um, easy accessible for folks to get their input out uh, and we've been doing that. It, you know, certainly we can do better, but that discussion has been happening and it is in the works and we're just trying to get to that point to have that. On, uh, I would say the city planner that uh, we have to use all our resources that, uh, as we know, the city of Flint is a um, diversity city that uh, I believe that if we use all our resources and get them together, not with uh, transparency, without inclusivity that uh, will get uh, the city in order. Well, I think I take a conservative approach on my answer for this one um, because in, if we were in better fiscal stability and better uh, budget budgetary, I think as my council colleague alluded to, um, if it was grant funded perhaps, if we could find a source of uh, paying, because it is a salary, it is uprolling of uh, a new position, a new department if you will, and it will be a new cost to the residents. So I think we have to measure what we have right now, if we can get creative, and if the mayor presents it in his total budget as a priority, I think I can get behind it. What I wouldn't want to see is just uh, having it, you know, be 100% on the city's back. I'd like to see some incentives around what this person will do. Um, we've had some in the past that were not as successful as Mr. Ganey. Mr. Ganey was top notch uh, back when he was our planner. And the city is really planned out uh, because it's an old city. So now it's like retrofitting and finding new opportunities within the city to build and to change the landscape. So I think we need a real bold thinker in that position if it is to be funded. And I could get behind it only if it, uh, if we're, if our past shortfalls are behind us and we can get some kind of a grant to help offset some of those fixed costs of a new salary. Thank you. Yes, we have to evaluate how much uh, the city planner can bring to uh, the city. And, uh, and also we need to know how much we're willing to, to pay him or her. But I would like to see commission, probably uh, uh, start with uh, getting a commission. So if he or she does a great job and bring businesses to uh, uh, our city, so we, uh, we will consider uh, hire him as a full-time or her, her as a full-time. It's, it's, it's wonderful to have a city planner, like Brian said, we uh, work on it right now, and uh, um, I'm behind it, but as long as it's uh, really um, help to bring uh, revenue to our city, and um, like Brian uh, Lapierre said also, it depends, if we're doing well already, do we really need it? But right now, I don't see that we, we can afford to, uh, to uh, have one yet. But in the future, if we do well, if we have more business to, uh, to invest, uh, to come to our city, and we are willing to, uh, to uh, hire a city planner. But I would like to see um, the business liaison, something small, walk the street, visit businesses, and uh, come to the city hall and report them, okay, this, this is what they need. So uh, to, pro, to help them to uh, prosper the business, that's what I want to see, something start something small first. Then uh, when we have an, enough money, we will continue to, to do what we, we, we want to do. And that's, that's, my, my, uh, that's what I, I see, and um, 
I'm not against anything for now, but we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Yes, um, a city planner. I believe a city plan is very important, especially when, you know, our landscaping is changing, you know, the city's changing and, you know, people grow and, and it's a big city and it's very important, but I couldn't agree anymore with uh, Mr. Lapierre and, and Mr. Net. Like right now, we're still in fiscal problem. You know, we still, we're still in, uh, we're trying to get out of the hole, you know, this, you know, you need money and uh, we get, we're working on those and I think, um, you know, I think the city can hold off on that until we get our finances in order. And, you know, if we can uh, maybe advocate for any, any grants or outside agencies, you know, to help with that, that, that'll be great. But right now, I think the focus should still continue to try to get out of the debt that we're in and, and, and work together, you know, together with the community and, and, you know, maybe have more meetings, be a little more transparent with what people want and, and you know, to, to have a better outlook, a better vision of what, what's going to help the city for now. But right now, I don't think that we're in a financial position to do that, to get a city planner. It's great. We need it. But right now, I think we can hold off with that. City planner, have we had this discussion before? <laughs> Um, you know what, I'm going to talk a little bit about public safety. Um, you know, we need more police, we need more fire, and we need more ambulance in this city. Um, people real, don't realize how bad we need the ambulance service in this city. Um, if an ambulance is called to your house to take you somewhere and they're taking you to Salem Hospital, you know, there isn't another ambulance in the city. You know, once the fire ambulance leaves the city and once that um, one other ambulance leaves the city, we have no coverage in the city. They'll tell you that the, um, the one in Beverly will move up to Salem and so on and so forth, but um, it takes a long time. We need a lot more coverage in the city, and if um, you're going to live in this city and we're going to ask people to invest in this city, they've got to feel safe in this city, and that's the first thing we have to do. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's all our questions. We got through it. We got through it. All right. Thank you for tuning in for tonight's candidate forum featuring candidates running for counselor at large. We understand that we cannot get to all the t all of the topics everyone wants to hear about. Oh, I'm mad. My bad. They got to do closing. Mm -hmm. I was just going off. My mind wandered. <laughs> Buzzy's going to do this to closing. <laughs> Sorry, Buzzy. I knew. <laughs> closing. How long do we have? You guys got 90 seconds. <laughs> My name is Buzzy Botton. I'm number two on the ballot. I um, thank you if you'd vote for me. Um, I want to, uh, first of all, thank Lynn Community TV for hosting this. And, um, I hope that viewers out there got what they were looking for. Thank you and good night. My name is Jose Manuel Encarnacion. I'm number seven on the ballot. I have a passion for public service. I've been serving in for over 20 years in, in my community and living all over the city. And it is my passion. I'm running because I'm committed to my city. I want to make the, the city government to work better for all of us. I'm running because I want to be your voice. I want to, I want to represent every single one of you out there. Um, I am, I represent the whole community. It is time for someone like me to run for city council at large um, to contribute. I'm. Uh, to contribute to the to the great city of Lynn. It is an honor. It will be an honor for me to be elected um, on November 5th. I represent diversity and I am an, an essential of the of this wonderful city of Lynn. I will respectfully ask you for your vote on November 5th. November 5th. Please vote number seven. It is time to see diversity at the city hall. Vote number seven for Jose Encarnacion. And if you need 
um, transportation, uh, on date of the election, you can call me 781-704-8432, Vos 7, Vos Jose Manuel Encarnacion. Thank you, Lynn Community Television, for hosting tonight's debate. Thank you for all the work you've done covering our meetings throughout the year and this year, covering our subcommittee meetings. Those are the important meetings that we have and we share and we get ideas from you, the community. Um, this is my first time running for re-election. For the last two years, it's been an honor for me to serve you as a city councilor. It's been an honor to serve with, with the other 10 city councilors. It's an honor to serve you the community, a community that I've lived in, my parents have lived in, my great-grandparents and my great-grandparents when they immigrated here from Eastern Europe. The questions that we answer tonight, it's always difficult when you're trying to answer the question in 90 seconds. Many of those questions that you have still haven't been answered. I hope tonight showed the effort that we put in as a council each and every night, not just having answers for those questions, but the effort it takes to get answers to those questions. If your question hasn't been answered incomplete, my phone number is 781-953-4841. I ask that you reach out to me for your, to share your ideas, to share your concerns. I'm elected by you. I serve you. I'm respectfully asking for your vote this November 5th so that I can continue serving you on the Lynn City Council. It's been an honor for the last two years. Please, I ask that you reach out to me with any additional questions that you have between now and the election. Thank you. Once again, so I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to uh, Lynn Community Television for hosting this event tonight. I'm a husband, a father, a homeowner, and a taxpayer. My name is Joel Hippolyte. And I have been living in the city for the past 19 years, involving in the civic activities with the numbers of nonprofit organizations. And I decided to run for office of council at large because I, I want to bring some fresh ideas and new vision for our city. And when I get elected, the issues that I'm going to work on, including the youth go development, the security and violence in the city, the housing crisis, the opioid crisis, and the higher taxes that the homeowners and business owners are facing every year in the city. I work together with my colleagues to uh, see what we can do in that situation for our business owners and the homeowners in the city. And uh, I believe that it is my goal to continue to work with people and my colleague to tackle those issues and together I believe that we will make a big difference. Thank you. Thank you to Lynn Community Television, McCollar as our moderator and the best timekeeper, Mr. Dick Coppinger over there. Really want to thank you all for having us this evening. I'm Brian Lopp here and I do ask for one of your four votes on Tuesday, November 5th. I'm fifth on the ballot, so it should be very easy. Vote number, number five on November 5th. Um, Lynn means everything to me. I was born and raised here. Uh, my parents live here still. My in-laws, my wife's parents, that's where my, I met my wife. We're all Lynn, we're all the time. It's where I send my kids to the public schools. It, it honors me that, uh, you know, I'm going, hopefully, what I would hope for is a, a seeking a, a third term now. Feels like we've been here a long time. The reality is we haven't. There's still a lot of work to do. Just completing my fourth year. And we have the energy, the talent, the teamwork, the council right now, as we are working well together, cooperatively, collaboratively, without ego. No one goes into City Hall thinking they have all the answers. It's easy to think that, but when you get into that 
chamber and you're making votes on behalf of Lynn residents day in and day out, you have to develop a teamwork. You have to have an approach that's gonna move the city forward. This is a team that will move us forward. Um, I've been honored and blessed. It's a busy job. It's one of the hardest jobs I've ever done. We're out all the evenings. We're out on weekends constantly at various events. I think we're doing the best job we can in very difficult circumstances. Please send us and please send me back for another term on Tuesday, November 5th. Thank you. I'm honored to be here tonight and to sit uh, to share a table with this wonderful, amazing man. <laughs> you guys did, uh, did a great job. Congratulations. Again, uh, thank you, um, Berlin um, Community Television, for hosting this quorum. Um, my name is Hong Nat. I'm seeking for re-election because I love Lynn. I have the passion to continue to work on behalf of our residents. Uh, for the past eight years, I have uh, done um, pretty good, uh, I believe. But I don't speak much, as you all know. I don't, talk, I don't like to talk about myself. Um, but I, I, I will do what I can uh, to continue to serve our city the best I can and uh, to represent our uh, constituents uh, the best I can. And um, for, for all this, this time, I believe that um, we work so well together. That's why we have come this far. And I don't see, I don't see reason why uh, we, um, we, uh, we do anything else um, the, uh, different. Just continue what we can and uh, our city will move forward as long as we, we are sincere enough and try our best and that, that, uh, that, that, that will work. And um, on September, uh, November 5th, I respectfully ask for 104 votes. I'm number six on the ballot. If you want, if you want to learn more about me, you can visit my website at votehong.net. And thank you so much and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you all, gentlemen. Uh, I want to thank Lynn Community Television for hosting this, hosting this wonderful uh, forum. And uh, you heard, uh, we heard the questions, we heard the answers, but the facts remain that our city's in debt. We have escalating property taxes. We lack security, safety, roadways are bad, and we need new leadership. We need new energy. You know, I'm Lennon Pena. I've lived in Lynn my whole life. I'm running because our children of our city, everyone in the city de deserves a better version of what city could, Lynn could be. I'm running because I know I can help facilitate those changes together, collaboratively. And I'm running because I love Lynn and I love everyone in our community. From Pine Hill to downtown to Ward 1 to East Lynn, we are all Lynners. And that's why I want to run, because I know together we can. Please, on November 5th, vote for Lennon Pena, number four on the ballot. I respectfully ask for one of your four votes. Please vote. For, give me a vote, please. Give me an opportunity. Thank you. All right. Yeah, now now we can get to the closing. <laughs> all right, thank you guys. Thank you all for tuning in for tonight's candidate forum featuring candidates running for council at large. We understand that we cannot get to all of the topics everyone wants to hear about, so we encourage you to visit lintv.org and go to the election section where you can up where you can find forums from other organizations, candidate profiles, and to learn more about the candidates. Before we go, we would like to remind everyone that that we will be holding a live election results show on Tuesday, November 5th, starting at 8 p.m. The panelists will offer their opinions on the races and reveal the results as soon as we get them. Thanks again for watching LCTV's Candidate Forum. I'm your host, Mukal Kabongo. Have a great night, ladies and gentlemen.